Did you know that London is currently experiencing a historical surge in sexually transmitted diseases? From gonorrhea reaching its highest rate since 1918, to syphilis levels not seen since 1948, this metropolitan city is caught in an ongoing battle against this. So why is London's STI rate skyrocketing? And what can we learn from this alarming trend? Let's dive deep into the fascinating and scandalous history behind London's raging STI problem. London's STI problem can be traced back to the 1500s, when Henry VII and VIII shut down Southwark's brothels in a bid to squelch the spread of syphilitic sores. Historical records suggest that one in five Londoners was likely to have had the pox by the age of 35 in the 1770s, against a mere 8% in the city of Chester and less than 1% in rural areas. Researcher Simon Sreeter posits that due to gonorrhea's high contagion rates, a majority of Londoners from that era may have had an STI. Fast forward to today, London is still an STI hub. Thanks to antibiotics and advancements in medicine, today's STI rates are a far cry from what the Georgians experienced. However, the UK Health Security Agency recently reported that nearly 83,000 cases of gonorrhea were diagnosed in England in 2022, the most since 1918. Cases of syphilis were also at their highest since 1948. Cases of syphilis were also at their highest since 1948. Several factors contribute to London's STI prominence, including its young, fast-growing population with extensive social networks facilitating the spread of STIs. Marginalized groups, such as those in the Afro-Caribbean community and men who have sex with other men, are also disproportionately affected by STIs in London. IV is no longer the death sentence it once was, and pre-exposure prophylaxis, PrEP, a pill taken daily, can significantly reduce the risk of contracting HIV. Unfortunately, men who take PrEP report higher rates of gonorrhea and chlamydia, as they feel it's safe not to use condoms. Sex and drugs now intertwine in the ESTI landscape, fueled by dating apps like Grindr that enable users to access both more easily. Surveys reveal that approximately one in five gay or bisexual men in London participate in chemsex, sex on drugs like crystal meth, reducing their inhibitions and increasing their sex drive. This behavior can lead to a ridiculous amount of sexual partners, upwards of 20 in a weekend, recalls Iron, a former participant in chemsex. However, this combination comes with a high price, as gonorrhea is becoming increasingly resistant to antibiotics. Chemsex also poses additional risks such as sexual assault, drug addiction, and even death. Dr. Anatole Menon Johansson of Brook, a sexual health charity, states, we probably have more young men dying of chemsex than we do dying of AIDS. Fear of stigmatization remains a significant obstacle to effective health messaging and education in many communities, particularly among gay and bisexual men. When these men account for 84% of new syphilis cases and 72% of gonorrhea cases, it's essential to prioritize education over blame. Gay rights activist Peter Tatchell emphasizes that these alarming statistics should be a wake-up call to improve sexual health education targeted at gay and bisexual men because blame won't solve the problem, education will. So what can we learn from this fascinating yet unsettling situation in London? The importance of education, awareness and destigmatizing conversations surrounding STIs cannot be overstated. By understanding the complex history and modern dynamics of London's STI epidemic, we can better approach this issue in our communities leading to healthier, safer lifestyles for everyone.